Are you trying to get an array to spill? Maybe like this, but it won't. I may have the solution for you. Let's go. All right, let me talk you through the uh, scenario here and the solution. Um, and a big shout out to Mark Proctor and his post talking about spilling multiple filter functions. Um, I'll put a link to Mark's post in the description. Okay, so here's the scenario. I've got a table and I just want to grab the ID and the color based on if they're included or not. So here we go. We've got the little simple filter function. That's just saying filter the code column, okay, where we have include equals y. So if I put another y in here, that spills. And then this is separate columns, and this is spilling as well. Whereas if I'd just written that formula, okay, let me show you, equals, let's go text split. All right, I'll just split that cell, just to show you it working, with a space. Okay, it splits apart, great. And then I just want the second and the fourth item. So I'll go choose calls, um, and then right to the end, comma two, comma four. Um, so there's, you know, working beautifully. But if I change this from E4 to actually try and refer to the array, E4 hash, ugh, horrible, okay. I want it to spill. So how have I done this? Well, it's a crazy looking formula, but don't stop watching because I will explain it. And it's not as bad as you think. It's bad, but not as bad as you think. Okay, so it's a combination of a whole bunch of stuff. And this is a nice lesson in learning what some of these functions do as well, okay? Right, so how do you get these to work? Well, essentially you've got to run down this array doing the, the split and then vertically stacking the results, okay? So, it really starts with a function called reduce, all right? Which is a weird name for a function because what it does is actually like um, an accumulator. If anybody's ever done Power Query, like list.accumulate or something like that, a little bit like that. So you start with something and then you can add something to it. Um, you can start with a list and add some, another item to it and it grows and grows and grows, okay? So you need an initial value. Um, we're actually gonna get rid of this initial value to start with. It's, it's, it's always like something like a, a word or, or nothing, double a blank, right? It's just nothing. You might start with one or a zero if you're doing a numerical sort of accumulation. We're just doing text, so I'm just gonna start with a blank. It doesn't really matter, okay? Then we're saying, right, what's the array we want to run down? Well, that's this array. Okay, comma. And then the function, all right? Does it give us any help here? Probably not. If I click on it, it doesn't really help. Maybe if I go in here for the FX, the function. The function is a lambda that is called to the reduce array. Okay, and the lambda takes two values. All right, so let's go back here. And we'll go equals reduce, initial value, nothing. Array is this little range here, okay, comma. The function has to be a lambda. I've done other videos on lambdas in the past, okay, so you can go and watch a few of those. Right, so what do we put in here? This is, this is the tricky bit, right? So you see people doing different sort of characters here to, to represent something. I quite like this, okay, let's go underscore previous or starting point, if you want, and underscore each. Okay, those are two little sort of parameters. So what it's gonna do is I'm gonna run through and say start with the previous item, which is blank to start with, and then for each item, do something to it, and then it'll stack it, okay? So what is the, um, the actual calculation, well, that's gonna be my text split calc, okay? So I want to vstack, okay, to start with, 
the previous underscore. This is why I use underscores, it just makes it easier to call the other things. And then and previous is going to be blank to start with, that's the starting point. So you're going to have a blank row, which we'll get rid of at the end with a drop, I know. Okay, so start with the previous item, which is empty. Then we're going to do the text split. Well, actually, it's, remember it's the choose calls. All right, and then um, text split. So what are we running down? Well, we're running down the each, okay, each item. And for that, I'm going to split it by a uh, space. Okay, and we're picking two and four. Okay. So that's going to V stack that one on top of each other, close the bracket, and there we have the answer. Sorry, a couple of brackets on the end, always let miss, miss them off. But that first blank, you know, there's nothing there. So we need to drop that. So we go to the word drop, and then right at the end, I'm do, going to do a comma one just to get rid of the first row. I'll do it up in my formula bar, comma one, enter. And now it's dynamic. So if I get rid of a Y, or if I add another Y, or add all the Ys, pretty good. Okay, so that's the pattern. That is a pattern. And check this out. This formula, right, you need to format this. So you can go through doing Alt Enter to nudge things onto different lines. But I'm going to use the Excel Labs add in, okay, which automatically gives you the nice layout, which I'm then going to copy and just paste back into this cell. All right, so now if I close that down, I've got a nicely formatted drop reduce. Okay, it looks a bit crazy, but hopefully that helps you learn the pattern. All right, so it's reduce, start with nothing, or a zero or a one if you do numerical accumulation. Start with nothing. Which array are you trying to iterate down? you know, the one that was causing you an issue. And then it's this lambda previous each, okay? And then V stack the previous with whatever action you're performing on each row, okay? And I'm at grabbing the second and fourth for this choose call. So that's my function, all right? So whatever your function is, you just need to refer to the each. And then you just drop the first record. Bit of a weird one, but hopefully not as terrifying or as horrible as you think. Um, worth documenting that as well if you are using it in your workbook. So let me know what you think. You use this? Have you used it before? Is this new to you? Do you think you can use it? Is it too scary? Love to hear your thoughts and I'll catch you in the next video.